Molly Scott Cato. Yeah, I actually think we will get an agreement in Paris, and um, I think that's really going to be historic. And I think it's partly an attitude of mind. It's partly a choice whether you're optimistic or pessimistic. And I used to be very pessimistic, and when I got to be about 40, suddenly I became an optimist, and this was a huge relief to me. I think I must have realized I was at least halfway through my life, so I might as well stop being gloomy. And I do think that having a positive approach actually helps us deal with crises. So I, I try to stay that way, even when things are looking really scary, as they are. Um, and I also think what will happen in Paris is that people will look very closely at all sorts of numbers and percentages for reductions and so on, and they'll get terribly sort of obsessive about that, and in the end they'll come away with, with numbers and pledges. But I don't really think that's the point. I think the point is the policies you introduce to, re to make the carbon dioxide reductions real. And so I'm much more interested in, in the technologies and the policies than I am actually in the targets. And I think that the stumbling block in Paris, well, this isn't um, a novel observation, but the stumbling block will come around the issue of climate finance because the argument will be from the poorer countries, you've blasted away with fossil fuels for 100, 200 years, and now you're stopping us from developing down the same path, and that's just not fair. And I think we should take that argument on the chin, and to make up for our historic emissions, we should give the technologies that we've developed as a result of burning all those fossil fuels for free to the countries that need them, to allow them to not go through the sort of dirty, energy-intensive phase that we've been through in our own development. Um, so I'm not uh, confident that that will happen, but I do think that we need a, a novel proposal on finance, and I think we have to, we have to realize that, that the situation is sufficiently critical that we have to put cash to one side and do what's right. And that free technology transfer is what's right and it's what's, what's necessary to allow countries to reach a decent level of human development without producing the sort of carbon dioxide we've produced. 